Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Our severe weather threat has gotten lower, but we're not out of the woods just yet. WMT's first alert meteorologist Evan Hatter has more on what we should be keeping an eye on. Evan. Well, Keaton, the good news, our severe weather threat about a couple hours ago got downgraded from the level two slight risk to the level one marginal risk for everyone. Not a huge threat out there tonight, but we are watching the possibility for some rumblers moving through a little bit later on tonight. Here's the map. You see the greatest risk. In fact, I'll pan the map. You can see it. The greatest risk well to our north and definitely well to our north and east over parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and even into parts of New York where they're dealing with an enhanced risk for severe weather. For us, just that level one threat. We've seen a couple of down pours out near Pikeville right now, but the big action remains not in Middlesbrough. No, let's back it up and we'll take you out to the west, exactly where the largest concentration is. Strong to severe storms just to the north and west of Louisville. Others in southern Ohio These are going to continue to scoot to the south and east as we head through the nighttime hours. In fact, we'll animate that map, pan it over a little bit. You can see exactly what we're dealing with. The ingredients not necessarily that good for severe weather. There you can see though some of that fog already developing there from Buffalo Mountain where the temperature Temperature is 70. Your forecast first. Let's say you're headed out to the course tomorrow. Looking pretty nice. We could see a downpour early, but otherwise in pretty good shape. But keep that app handy with the potential for an early shower or two. Mid 80s a daytime high. Keaton, I'll have the very latest on a beautiful weekend ahead in just a few minutes. I'm sure the weekend the ball might actually go in the hole over the weekend. Yeah, it, like. right. it was close, close tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Evan. Kentucky Senate President Robert Stivers joined University of Louisville President Kim Schatzel in touring Redbird Dental Clinic. WMT's Chandler Wilcox details how the tour shined a spotlight on a partnership helping the region. The Redbird Dental Clinic is a health care hub for people in multiple counties. In the southern portion of Clay County, next to Leslie County, Bell County, Harlan County, Knox County. Through a partnership with the University of Louisville, advanced health care is brought to the area. A lot of people don't realize this is about as state of the art as you can get if you're sitting in Lexington or Louisville, but it's sitting in Redbird. Recently hired as the U of L president, Kim Schatzel made her first trip to see how the partnership is making an impact. We want to just work for everybody in the Commonwealth, so I was really pleased to be able to be asked to come um, and to be able to meet everybody that's here uh, and got a big warm welcome. I'm learning a lot as well. Through the partnership, dentistry students also clock in hours going from the city to rural Appalachia. Coming from Louisville, we're in like a metro area, you kind of see a different um, patient base. So coming here, it's been really nice to see these patients that are so appreciative of the work that we do. With multiple sides benefiting, the partnership has led to progress. Well, and we have dedicated to work to be able to uh, make it a place that people want to live, can prosper, and to be able to work with the communities to be able to do better. Bringing advanced technology to urban and rural communities. In Clay County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Senator Robert Stivers also says the partnership has lasted around seven years. New Kentucky State Police crime statistics show animal cruelty cases increased 19.5% in 2022. In 2021, there were more than 700 cases. Last year, there are nearly 600. In 2022, there were 477 animal cruelty arrests in the state. The year before, just 257. In the new KSP crime report, animal cruelty is one category that saw an increase in both offenses and arrests. A follow-up to a story that got a lot of attention, a Tazewell, Tennessee man's stolen Jeep has been found. You'll remember this case from earlier this month. The thief left a note saying he was sorry for taking the Jeep and would eventually return it. Authorities have found the Jeep in Ewig, Virginia, and they say they have a suspect. As one year since the July flood approaches, Christian Appalachian Project's Operation Sharing partnered with Marine Toys for Tots and Good 360. Through the partnership, CAP received 40,000 toys for kids, and today they made their last stop across eastern Kentucky at Perry County Central High School. One local volunteer with Save the Children, Olivia Day, says Operation Sharing is a gift to the community. I'm just beyond thankful for the 
good-hearted people that have just worked relentlessly to make sure that all of our people have what they need. Marine Toys for Tot staff say that thousands of toys were handed out to kids during the event and they hope to continue bringing the love back to Eastern Kentucky. A group of volunteers from Michigan have made a stop in Eastern Kentucky to spread hope to those still rebuilding from massive flooding nearly a year ago. WMT's Jordan Mullins has more from Wayland where he spoke to those with the group and a homeowner who told us a bit about her story. In the Wayland community of Floyd County, Mary McKinney was one of many who watched floodwaters rise around her home nearly one year ago. When it started getting underneath the porch, coming through the porch, I was panicking. It was something that I wouldn't want anybody else to go through. On Thursday, Appalachian Service Project brought a group of volunteers from Michigan to help McKinney and her family rebuild. To have this space to serve is just so, it's so special and eye-opening and it really lets us almost reset. Those with the volunteer group say it is an honor to make a difference, but the relationships they build with those in the community is unmatched. The thing we find and catches a lot of people off guard, especially the first year, is just uh, how special uh, we're served from, from the people as well. Men and women, young and old, showing compassion and spreading hope. I didn't think nobody cared enough to help me and stuff, but these people did. They reach out, reach out to me and done the work. I thought it was hopeless, but they showed me different. Helping those in a time of great need. In Floyd County, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. McKinney and her family have moved back into the home since the July floods, but say there is still plenty of work to be done. And wanted to thank everyone for all the help she has received. Kentucky Power has filed to have residential power bills increase by 18.3%. The Kentucky Public Service Commission will be hearing this case before it's able to go into effect. We spoke with an economist at the University of Pikeville, Dr. Greg Green. He says the large, that large power bill increase would impact other parts of people's budget. And it could just be the price of resources. So, you know, they're coming in, resources are coming in the back end that they use to generate electricity. Well, we've been experiencing inflation at the front end but they have been experiencing in the back end and the production end too. Green says that people may need to decide what they will cut out if they know their wages will not be increasing with the possible power bill increase. Researchers at UK are collecting data from the East Palestine train derailment. The derailment involved toxic chemicals that leaked into the air and the Ohio River. UK's research team is studying the short and long-term health effects that the chemical spill has on the community. The study follows participants from nine different counties in Ohio and West Virginia. We have been told that we are going to just get cancer. You know, if I have to be a lab rat to prove that there's chemicals here and that gets us more funding and more testing, then that's what we're going to do. The study follows participants from nine different counties. New business in Letcher County is taking sweets to the streets. Tasty treats by tab. The new rolled ice cream food truck will bring some different dishes to the area from the specialty rolled ice cream to cotton candy and more. The business will make its way to people around the region. Owner Tabitha Shipley said working with other businesses and organizations to find a place to park her passion is one of the most important parts of her small business, like today when she parked in Neon for her opening day. We are local people and we help each other and um, if these are our customers, I, they're our friends, and I think that we should help each other. The truck's treats include funnel cakes and fresh waffle cones. You can find the menu and their schedule for the truck on our website. A back-to-school tradition will soon to re return to Central Kentucky. The YMCA of Central Kentucky is getting ready to gear up for more than 5,000 students for the new academic year. They'll be holding their annual back to school rallies throughout the region on Saturday, August 5th. The YMCA has carried on that community driven initiative for the past 12 years. Organizers say in that time, demand has only gone up. 
We've seen a, a growing number of students who receive school supplies, and we believe that this will allow a little bit of flexibility to some of our families who struggle. Barry says you have to come in person to a distribution site on August 5th to register and get a backpack. The Osborne Brothers Hometown Festival is coming up in just a few weeks. The 30th annual edition of the festival is going to honor and celebrate the life and career of Bobby Osborne. Osborne died back in July, June. The festival is August 2nd through 5th at the Bobby Osborne Pavilion there in Hyden. There's going to be food, music, including a special performance from Bobby's band, the Rocky Top Express. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, someone's finally won the billion dollar jackpot. More on that after this. And it wasn't me, but we are winning the weather lottery as we head towards next, the weekend and beyond. Details after this.